Hey everybody, welcome back to the Print 3D channel. I know it's been some time since we actually did any fun projects, and on this weekend's edition of the Weekend Print, we're going to use this crinkle lamp to make it a fully functional lamp on a really cool DIY project, so stick around. Hey everybody, welcome back, and thank you for joining me here on the Print3D channel. I know it's been a while since I did any really cool projects. We've been doing a lot of unboxing and first impression videos lately, and I've got some really cool stuff lined up for you guys. The first project we're going to do is a cool DIY project. What we're going to do is we're going to take the crinkle lamp by Lobo CNC over on Thingiverse and turn it into a fully functional lamp. But the first thing we're going to talk about is how we printed the crinkle lamp. Now we did use multiple processes in Simplify 3D to utilize the semi-translucent look of the Matter Hackers Build Series Blue Filament, because it is semi-translucent. And we did use two different colors of the Build Series. We used black and their blue. But we used multiple processes in Simplify 3D, just to make sure we didn't have any infill on the actual crinkle design of the lamp, just to make sure all the light shines through. We're also going to design a very cool custom base in Cinema 4D for all of our LEDs to stand on, and for the base to sit on so we can have this thing illuminate properly. So we've got a couple of things to go over. So the first thing we're going to talk about is Simplify 3D. So let's head over there and I'll show you how I set up multiple processes to print out this really cool crinkle lamp. Okay, so here we are in Simplify 3D. This is the crinkle lamp design by Lobo CNC. And again, I'll put that link down in the description so you guys can download and print this yourself. And the reason why I want to show you this is what we're doing is we're actually utilizing a very special feature in Simplify 3D under the Advanced tab. And that's the thin wall behavior. And the reason why we're using three different parameters or three different uh, processes in this print is because we want to utilize different aspects of that thin wall behavior. So for the first process, we're going to use perimeters only and allow single extrusion fill. On the second process, we're going to set this to the default settings because we don't want any infill. And that'll cover most of the crinkle lamp design. And then on the top, we're just going to use, again, the allow single extrusion fill. And what this is going to do is if we hit prepare to print, select all, and do the slice, you'll be able to see here that it fills in the areas at the bottom so we get a nice bed adhesion on that first layer and then it starts to do the rest of the model without any infill or any kind of gap fill at all so we utilize the semi-translucent look of the Matter Hackers Build Series filament and then once we get to the top when we do our filament change we want that gap to fill in so we have a nice sturdy piece and there's no gap between there that could crush when we're assembling our light. So that's the basic processes that we set up in Simplify 3D. And we're going to send this to the printer and I'm going to show you a little time lapse of the printout. And we'll meet you guys back over at the workbench.
So now that we have the lamp printed, and it was actually a really easy print too, because we just did a simple change filament command to add the Matter Hackers Build Series black filament in these last few layers, which was actually part of the multiple processes that we set up in Simplify 3D. So we would use extra infill or the gap fill feature. So this would be a nice thick wall and we didn't want any fill inside the actual crinkle lamp itself. So it, the light would shine through it. Plus it would uh, save a little plastic in print time. And we wouldn't have to worry about any kind of extrusion issues. So once the lamp was printed, the next thing we needed to do was to design the base. Now the base we actually designed in Cinema 4D. And it's actually only four or five objects, I believe. So let's head over to Cinema 4D real quick and I'll show you how I designed this. So here we are in Cinema 4D and here are our four objects that we use to create the base for the crinkle lamp. Now the base itself, we made this actually a little bit larger than the crinkle lamp. The crinkle lamp's about 100 millimeters square. And so we made our base 110 millimeters square at 25 millimeters tall to allow for our little cylinder that we're gonna to use to run our wires to get in because this is 20, uh, 20 millimeters in diameter. So the next piece is the insert and that's the piece that's gonna go up inside the crinkle lamp. Now, taking some measurements from that, it's 99 millimeter square opening, which is really nice. It's a nice good measurement to come up to have because it's not offset in one direction. So no matter how we put the crinkle lamp on top of the base, it'll fit perfectly. Now I made this 30 millimeters tall, but I actually raised it up to the certain height that I wanted to taste more just for a, a aesthetic look and then any kind of precise measurement. And the reason why I made this 30 millimeters tall is just so I'd have a, a, a block that I could uh, slide up and down until I was satisfied with its position. Now the light pole itself, if we go to the multi view by clicking this little button here in the corner, you can see that that starts at the bottom and goes all the way up at the top. So if we go back to our perspective view, the light pole is actually 140 millimeters tall and I believe it exposes 120 to 110 millimeters of the shaft up the center for us to attach our little LED strips to. Now the cylinder, this was a little bit tricky, but we used a bend object. Now if I turn these other objects off by clicking on the green arrow, so you can see this, and if I hit the S key, that'll center us up here in the frame on Cinema 4D, and I'm just holding down the Option key to rotate it. You can see that this bend object that I've added to a cylinder, if I turn this off, you can see it's just a cylinder. The bend object is made so we can do a nice uh, smooth curve coming out from the top of the base, down out the side, so we don't have to worry about our wires getting caught if we have too sharp of an elbow. And you can see if I move the bend object, actually here, let me hold on to that. Let me undo that real quick. And if I move the bend object, you can see that changes the where the bend actually is. And if I undo that, so we keep it in the right position. If I select the bend object, you can see I did a minus 90 degrees strength on the turn. So we have a perfect 90 degree angle. And the size of the little bend object is small enough that it would just be a nice little bend in the area and I wouldn't bend the whole cylinder. So if I turn all these objects on, select everything, hit the S key and center it up, you can see the object that we've created. Now the next part we need to do is boolean all of these objects together one at a time starting from the base and move up to the top. So what you'll do is you'll grab your base and your insert and you'll come in and on, under this menu here and grab a bool object. We'll drag this down to the bottom, we'll grab our two objects, we'll put them in the bool, We'll make sure the bool is a union of A and B and that'll create the base. The next thing you need to do is right click on it and go current state to object. Take these objects out of there, out of the little null object and you can delete that. Now what we can do is take these pieces out and delete them from the bool so we only have our base. Now it creates two objects with polygonal data. So what you need to do is right click, connect objects and delete and then you can just rename this full base. The next thing we need to do is add the base into the bool and the light pole so we join those two together. And now you can see the geometry has combined together. And again, click on the bool, go to current state to object, pull the objects out of the null it creates, delete the null, delete the objects out of the bool because you don't need those anymore. Join these two objects together, connect objects and delete. And then you can rename this final base. The next thing we need to do is we want to bool the cylinder out of our base. So if we just grab the cylinder object with the bend, bring in the base, and then we have to change our bool to be a subtraction. So we wanna go A subtract B, and that creates our hole. We right click on the object, go current state to object, 
open up that little null object, grab the two items, drag them out, delete the bool. We can delete the actual bool. And now we have our final piece, connect objects and delete. We can give this a final name, finished, oops, finished base. And now we have our final object. The last thing we need to do is come over to the file export menu and export this out as an STL file. Hit save. And we want to make sure that we select millimeters because that's the scale of the printing that we're going to do. And I'm going to hit cancel because I already have another file and I want, don't want to confuse myself. So that's the operation that we did for Cinema 4D. Now we'll drag this STL file over into Simplify 3D. We'll apply some basic settings and we'll send it to the printer. Okay, so here is our custom made lamp stand that we made in Cinema 4D. And as you can see, all the geometry looks pretty solid. Let me show you my process settings for this easy print. We did a 0.24 millimeter layer height with five top layers, three bottom layers, and three perimeters. We also used 10% infill. We did run a skirt a little bit away, actually a brim, sorry, at 10 outlines so it would hold down the object because it is a bit of a long print. I think it's about five hours. Again, 10% infill, no support. This is Matter Hacker's build series filament, so I'm running mine out at 210 degrees. I do have my four stage cooling system set up, and we did run this out at 45 millimeters per second and we're not utilizing any of the thin wall behavior that we did for the actual crinkle lamp. So if I go ahead and hit OK and hit prepare to print, you can see this is about a five and a half hour print and it only takes about $2.64 worth of material because if we go under the process settings under the other tab, we've entered the cost of the average price of the material for Matter Hacker's build series filament, which is $22.95 for a full roll. So that'll give us our estimate of cost for that, which is $2.64. So this looks like a pretty easy print. Let's go ahead and send it over to the GMAX 1.5 XT Plus. I'll fire up a time-lapse camera and I'll meet you guys back over at the workbench. So once the print was done and I removed it from the build plate, there was no problems whatsoever with the print and it actually turned out really, really good. And the first thing I did, of course, was to make sure that our measurement of 99 millimeters for the top would fit in here perfectly. And of course, there is just a little bit of place so it fits perfectly in our first iteration, which I'm really happy with. That's why we measured twice and we only print once. So once we had everything printed, now it's time to do the assembly work. And the assembly is going to involve this LED system I purchased from Amazon and it was a really sweet deal. Basically what you're going to need for the assembly of this light is you're going to need a roll of LED light strips. And this is actually a really good deal because it comes in a roll and there's a ton of them. And this particular kind is the super bright. Now I have to look on here to make sure I get the numbers right here. But this is the 6000 to 6500K light. So they're super, super bright and I got the waterproof versions. That way I don't have to worry about anything bumping into the LEDs wherever I install them and ruining the actual LED strips. Now it's real easy to peel off the little waterproofing and get to the little clips so you can do all the connectors. And I've already tested that out just to make sure it works. And it's really easy to do. You just peel this off and you just clip it off with some scissors or a real sharp X-Acto knife, being very careful not to cut any of the electronics or circuitry in your LED strips. And that'll expose the, the positive and negative so you can add the little clips that come in the package. The other thing you're gonna need, obviously, is a power supply. And these are relatively inexpensive. I bought the same brand of everything so I have matched equipment, and they're actually really, really cheap. This was only $8.99, which is a really good deal, and it gives you the power supply and the connector for US 
and another connector which I didn't understand what it's for I think it's for actually raw wires to hook up to because it has those kind of connectors but I'll show you that when we open the box and I bought an extra pack of um, connectors and slider switches and all kinds of little doohickeys to uh, complete the setup if I want to use the rest of the LEDs from the roll on another project and of course to have extras for the assembly of this and it also includes little jumpers so you can jump cable or jump LED strip from one area to another if you want an area where you have to fit these in so it's really good for cosplay stuff so I'll put the links down in the description for everything from my Amazon affiliate link it is an affiliate link it'll kick a little bit back to the channel if you purchase any of this stuff but it really helps out it doesn't cost you a penny and this is a really good setup it's from LED Mo or Ledmo and the three packages total was about $30 which is not bad at all considering once we have this light assembled we'll have some extra LEDs on the roll hopefully if I don't screw too much up and we'll have some extra connectors including there's a dimmer switch in here and I'm not sure if I want to use it but with the plug system that they have with this you can easily swap out different connectors really easily and add like a dimmer switch or a power switch or even if you wanted to use the LEDs that have multiple colors you could use a programmable system and do different colors but we're using the really bright white LEDs like I said they're the 6,000 to 6,500k uh, LEDs so it's going to really going to illuminate and in the design like I showed you guys in Cinema 4D we created four areas for the lights to attach to and we also created this really easy to access hole so we can slide all of our cables in so what we're going to do first is we're going to set up the wiring harness for what we need to do here before we attach it plug it in make sure it all works attach it to the base and then we'll because this is an adhesive back it's got the 3m adhesive back on here too i didn't mention that before and then we're going to use a little bit of hot glue just to make sure we uh, wrangle all of our wires before we turn the whole thing on and finish the assembly so the first thing we're going to need to do is rip into the packages and start our wiring harness so I've got everything I need here and I did do a little test run like I said I did pull out a piece just to make sure because I did have this the bought the LEDs that have the waterproofing on here that I could access the positive and negative connections to put on the clips and I did notice right away because this stuff is super heavy duty that there's three lights per little strip now I know from reading the little instruction manual that I think there's a minimum of six lights and that's exactly what we need to fit on our little uh, LED assembly here so what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull out the LED strips first and we're gonna cut them into two section sections because if you look on here there's a section to cut them every three LED now I know this says there's a minimum of three but I think there's it mentioned somewhere else in here there's or even online that a minimum of six would be suggested and you don't want to uh, have the length any longer than five meters and obviously we're not going to use more than five meters we're probably going to use maybe a meter at the most depending on how much we actually put in here but we're going to use six leds per side on the little on the shaft that goes up the center of this and i noticed this a little earlier this kind of looks like an atari joystick but anyway so let's go ahead and pull the leds off the roll and we'll cut them out into little um, six inch or six light sections and get them ready to put on the wiring harness so let's get started with that and i'm going to move some stuff out of the way while i talk here too now one of the things I wanted to tell you guys about is this LED package was super affordable like I said earlier and it comes with everything you need so if you're doing any kind of DIY project it actually has in the accessory bag it actually has set up for uh, setting up corners or even an intersection of lights if you wanted to do these on the ceiling now my original plan for purchase when I purchased these uh, LEDs was to use this for underneath the shelves on the print wall but as soon as I saw that crinkle lamp online and I remember during the 365 project that I really wanted to print that, I just never got a chance to, that this would be a perfect DIY project. So sorry headphone users, I'm gonna open up the accessory bag and I'm gonna dump out some of these parts here so we can get access to them and then we'll pull open the LEDs. So I'm gonna dump out some of this stuff and I'll show you guys some of the things that came with the accessory bag. Of course you have this rocker switch, which I believe is just an on off. And then there's the the power cable connector which you can use if you want to directly connect and of course on the spool it came with one too and we're going to use this one because it's already hardwired and ready to go and this is the one that's going to go out the bottom of the base and connect to our power source so you get a you get one of these but you also get three of these gr little jumpers so you can um, connect things uh, from a distance so uh, with these connectors it's actually connecting strip to strip 
with these, you can do a little bit of an extension, and I'm sure you could pull these apart and put your own wires at another length on here. But these are nice and handy if you want to add lights a distance from each other if you're illuminating something, say, like your 3D printer, or if you're using these for cosplay. These were really nice to get in that accessory bag. So there was three of these in the bag. There's also these little uh, felt, I believe they are. They're, they're non-conductive, and they're little uh, shelf hooks, so you can attach your LEDs to the shelf, which was a nice addition in the accessory bag. And now inside the accessory bag are also all the little connectors that you want to use if you're just going around corners and you have to use this. But if you want to go around a corner, you have this little piece here. And this actually has your positive and negative connections on here. And it's a little flat piece of metal coated in like a plastic, a non-conductive plastic. But it's got the little spots on here so you can use the connectors and connect this to go around corners. So that's nice and handy. We won't be using those, we'll be using the jumpers. And of course they gave you a ton of these little connectors because you need those the most. Now I already experimented to make sure this would work and they actually, they actually snap together really easy. It's opening and that's a little bit of a challenge sometimes because of my big hands. So let's put everything out of the way here so we can get into the roll of LEDs that we're gonna use. And again, we're only gonna use six per side on the inside of our LED. So we're only gonna need to cut out three little strips that have six lights each on each. So let's get started on that part. Also in the package with the roll of LEDs was another jumper cable with the power selector and another extra one of these. So we have a total of four of these, so we have quite a few of those. So we have multiple ways to connect to our power source, including ones that have the hardwired connector already built in. So that's nice and convenient so you don't have to figure that out. And the cables are long enough that it'll do what we need to do. Plus we're gonna add a little bit of hot glue to glue down the cables so they don't move around inside the lamp should we move it around and block our light or become entangled and cause problems and cause maybe a short circuit. I don't think these things would ever short. So the roll of LEDs, come, this comes on this spool here, and this is the part I cut off to test to make sure all the connectors work. Because like I said, I bought the waterproof versions just to make sure I protected all my LEDs should I use these in any other purpose, and I was able to peel off the waterproofing and access the positive and negative connectors so I could add all the connections that I need. And I really like this spool. It actually reminds me of an old film spool, but it's super flexible so you can get in there and get to the LED. So I'm gonna put this aside and we're gonna cut out our little strips of six total LEDs that we're gonna add per side. And you can just cut these with scissors. You just have to make sure you cut it right on the line. So let's go ahead and get started with that. So I'm gonna roll out a little bit of this so I have some to work with. And then I'll go ahead and make sure that I cut these every other line so I have a total of six LEDs per line. And I'm just gonna make sure, and I just have some really sharp scissors here. And because these have the waterproofing on here, it really helps guide you through and you'll get a nice clean cut, perfect one. So remember, we're gonna strip off that waterproofing so we can access the positive and negative so I'm not too worried about the waterproofing and the connections. And you have to do it kind of carefully and I'll show you why in a few minutes here once we get to that stage. So let's go ahead and cut our next piece. So there's two, so we have a total of three. We need four, so let's cut our last one. A total of, I believe that'll give us, that's six lights per side times four, that'll give us 24 LEDs at 6,000 to 6,500K brightness. So that's really gonna illuminate the lamp. And the reason why I'm using them this bright of an LED on this particular project is because this is a semi-translucent. This is Matter Hacker's Build Series Blue Filament. And I don't think it's really supposed to be semi-translucent, but it is, and that's okay, because I'm gonna highlight it with these LEDs and really bring out the trans semi-translucent look. Plus it'll bring out all the geometry that was put into this design by uh, Lobo CNC, I believe is the guy who designed this, and that link will be down in the description. And I'll also upload my remix of the stand up on the same link, and those will be down in the description as well. So we have our pieces of LED all set up. So let's go ahead and set the roll aside because we're not gonna need that for now. Hopefully we don't screw this up. And the first thing we wanna do is we wanna strip off that weatherproofing on here so we can get to the positive and negative. So the easiest thing I found to do was to just make a mark first where we want it to end and then just peel it apart and then, then just finish the cut and just do it very carefully. Again, you don't wanna damage the electronics but I believe they're embedded in, inside the little white plastic that's in the little LED strips. So I don't think you have any danger if you're not near anything, but we're obviously gonna be careful anyway. So let's go ahead and get that part done so we have our LEDs ready to install on our wiring harness. So you only need a little bit. You need enough to, for the connector to fit. And if you look, if you line these up, I don't know if you guys can see that in the overhead camera or not, 
but if you line these up, you only need about that much because you want the copper connector pieces that are showing here to touch the little conductive pieces that are inside these clips. So we only need up to that point. So it looks like just past the positive and negative marks on the little LED strips, and I'll show a little close up here so you can see what I'm talking about, on the LED strips should be perfect and we're not gonna expose that light. So we'll still use the diffusion aspect of the waterproofing seal on the LED strip to really diffuse the light out even more. And that was kind of a bonus when I saw that these waterproofing ones had a really thick cover on it. It's really gonna diffuse the light evenly around. That's why we're using four. So let's go ahead and cut. We're gonna do, uh, we're gonna cut off two pieces on each one of these to peel back the weatherproofing so we can expose the contacts. And like I said, we're just gonna cut right past the positive and negative. And we're just gonna put a little cut, just a little bit in there so we know where, where to tear off. Now I used, I'm using a semi-dull X-Acto blade. I'm not using a really sharp one because I didn't want to push down too hard and go through the uh, plastic and into the circuitry. So I'm trying to, I, I found an extra blade that I had laying around that it's, it's been used quite a lot. So it should be kind of dull, but not super dull. And I can tell right away, I'm actually having to saw a little bit to break into the weatherproofing, the outer seal of the weatherproofing. So I'm just going to do that a little bit on each one of these and basically just scoring it before we open it up and expose the electronics. So we'll go around and do that on all of these. Now for the final one, I've gone ahead, I went ahead and already stripped off the piece here and I went a little bit too far. When the clip comes on, it adds a little bit of yellow. So I'm gonna try and position this one properly. I could just cut out a fresh piece and use one of the other hardwired um, connectors, but this one is actually connected connected and I really want to use this for my connector out to the power supply. I don't want to use something that I put together as the one that's going to the power. I want to use something that was already put together. So this is the piece I cut off. It's going to have a little bit of yellow to it, but I think there's going to be so much light because these connectors aren't pure white. It's going to add a little bit of light to here that's going to have a little bit of a difference color, different color, but I don't think you're going to notice it. So let's go ahead and strip off the weatherproofing on all these little LED strips so we can get to the um, positive and negative connectors. Now it takes a little bit of effort to get this off. So just bear with me while I tear all these little pieces off. And now that we've scored it, it should. Yep, there it is. Okay, so it is peeling off nicely and I have my scissors here. Now I'm gonna carefully what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bend back the positive and negative, the power part, the actual LED strip, and I'm gonna go right on my score line and I'm gonna snip off that piece. And that was perfect. So here's our little piece of weather stripping and there's our exposed positive and negative. So I'm gonna keep these around because I don't want the cat to get to them. So let's go ahead and pull these apart. And it takes a little bit of effort. You just have to take your time and be patient with it. Once you get it separated, you just have to do it carefully so you're not ruining the electronics. Now, I know these are on a flexible material and they're designed to be bent and moved around, but we don't want to bend them too much. We just want to get them to a point where we can do this part of the operation and then they'll stay flat on the column that's up the center of our base that we made. So I've got this free, so let's go ahead and clip that piece off. And it's good that we have extra on the roll just in case during this process somehow we scratch or ruin these. These clips come apart pretty easy so we can replace something or if I uh, swap out positive or negative or somehow wire these the wrong way. Um, we're going to be using the jumper cables too so that's going to be a handed thing. The idea is is that the, the wiring harness where all the jumper cables will be will be at the top and we'll bundle those together and we'll just kind of put a big blob of hot glue there so they stay in one place. The light won't be affected by them because we'll maybe put like a zip tie or something around there. You want to be careful when you're separating the weatherproofing and the LED strip that you don't tear off too much of the adhesive back and expose that and put your fingers on it because the more you touch that adhesive back part, you're going to ruin the adhesive. So you want to be careful when you're doing this. I think I need sharp, sharper scissors here. Oh, there we go. So that one's exposed. 
So we have one more left and we can start putting together the wiring harness. Okay, so we have our positive and our negative connections exposed so we can start putting together the wiring harness. So let's go ahead and move some of the sharps out of the way so we don't cut ourselves. And let's set it up so we wanna see how this is all gonna go together. So one of the things I wanted to do, like I said, was use one of the things that's hardwired. So when I clipped off this piece in mind, I knew how many or how long this would be to fit on here. Now, the connector part will stick up on the top, and it, but it'll all be bundled inside the top of the lamp and we did take our measurements. So this is, uh, I believe this was 120 millimeters and it was about 160, I believe it was, or 140 before you get to the geometry. So we have a lot of room up in the top to uh, put together our wires and kind of wrangle them together there because we will have to use these little jumper cables. And I really don't mind using them because they are a big flexible wire and we can bundle them up together like that and make our little wiring harness. So let's get that set up and we'll um, get it all tested and make sure everything works. Okay, so let's go ahead and move this out of the way so we can start assembling up our little wiring harness. And like I said, we're gonna use these little jumpers so we can uh, jump the two or the uh, pieces together. So what we're gonna need to do, actually let's get this out again so we can take a look at this before we go too far. So basically the idea behind this is I made this big enough and this was a, if I remember correctly, this was a 20 millimeter um, cylinder that we used the bend tool in Cinema 4D to make a little opening that would give us access inside the lamp. So what I wanna do, my thought was, was originally I was just gonna go straight in, but I don't really want to, um, I didn't put the center shaft in on straight. We rotated this at 45 degrees so it would aim the light at the corners. So, and I didn't think about that ahead of time, but there's always a solution. So what I figured out was, is that I could put this on this side like this and tape it down. And then we can start using our jumpers from here to go to the next one and the next one and the next one. So we're gonna need one to this, we're gonna need one jumper to here, one jumper to here and one jumper to here. So we're gonna need three jumpers. Now, if we wanna um, not use the wires exposed as much, what we could do is we'll wire it from here to here and because we're gonna be placing um, the LED strips a little bit higher so, the L so there's room for this cable on the bottom to fit, and then once we have it all fit down, we'll hot glue it in place, that we would have room underneath the bottom because these jumpers have a similar size and height, and, oops, take that out, and height to that little piece that's on the bottom that's hardwired. So they're about the same size, so we have room. In my opinion, I think we'll have room. But we'll go ahead and we'll put together the wiring harness and we'll see how it all fits together and then we'll tape it on and plug it in and see how this all works. So let's get started with that. We know we're gonna need three jumpers, so let's put those in, in view so we have them ahead of time. And I don't think we are going to use any of the clips. We're gonna completely use the jumpers, so we probably won't need these at all. So like I said, the first thing we wanna do is let's keep this in sight so we're, we're watching as we do it. So for the first one, we're gonna come over the top, obviously, because we have our cable coming in and that'll connect to the next one. Now my thought is, is that we would take this one and connect it to there, and this would go to number three, and then our final jumper would be at the top, and that'll connect to number four. And that'll give us all four panels of light that we need for the inside of the light. So that's all we need to do, is we just need to connect these guys together and put it on the light and then plug it in and hope it works. So the big trick is, is getting the positive and negative to match. Now, they do mark the wires, you just have to remember which one is which that you're using. Now, I know this is universal. One could be positive, one could be negative because this is just a jumper. You just have to remember which one you're using for positive and negative. Now, on the cables, there's a little dashed line on here, and I'm gonna say that's the negative, and the one without any dashed line will be the positive. That way I remember during the assembly to connect the dashed line to the negative um, polarity on these little strips so we all connect negative to the dashed line on the cables. So while I'm doing this, we'll have the overhead camera just to make sure I do it right. So let's get this out of the way so we don't bump into it. And let's go ahead and connect all of our little jumpers to all of our little pieces. And we'll just move this out of the way a little bit so we can focus on the first one. And we're gonna connect the first jumper to the main cable that goes out for power. Now, like I said, these are some pretty strong little connectors in on, that connect the little LEDs. And they're a little challenging to get open 
But once you do, it exposes some wires, and I'm sure you guys can see that in the overhead camera. It exposes the wires that you will use that will connect to the LED strips and give us our connection to the wires. So what you want to make sure you do is that these, these copper little surfaces on here connect to or are close enough to that they mash down. Now they're bigger than the wire connectors on here. So as long as you line them up as best as you can when, and by clipping off that weatherproofing, we have ourselves a little bit of a guide where ours are going to end. So I'm pretty sure all we have to do is butt fit these up together and they will come pretty darn close to those things. Inside the little clips are little ridges that'll push any wires or cables connection, connecting to or from your LED strips down onto those wires. So that should give you a, a good solid connection. So let's make sure that we use the dashed wire on our negative connections. So the negative connection is to my left and the positive is to my right. And we just wanna make sure that we do that. So the dashed wire this side instead. So we'll flip it over. We'll open this up. With my big hands, these things are a little bit difficult to open. But once you get them open and then they're open, you can actually attach them. So we'll use this side. That way we make sure that the dashed wire, you can see that in the overhead camera, the dashed wire touches the negative, which on these little connectors, you can see positive is here and negative is there. So we'll go ahead and do our negative. And we'll just line these up, make sure that connects in there nicely. And the little copper, you just want to kind of look and make sure that you're connecting and touching. So what we'll do is since we're butt fitting it up to the weather stripping, if all of our connections and measurements were right, these should fit perfectly. And you just have to snap them closed. Looks like I got a little bit of the weather stripping on that one but it's closed. So there is our solid connection. So there's our first jumper. And we made sure that we were doing the striped wire is going to the negative connection, which is on the left side. So let's go ahead and connect our next one. And we'll make sure that our striped wire with the dash is going to our negative connection. And it is. So we don't need this one open. I don't need those open because that's exposing the wires that are already soldered. We just need this one open. So let's go ahead and connect that. There it goes. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and plug in our power supply real quick. And let's test our connection just to make sure. Let's move our hot glue gun. It's not plugged in, so it's not hot yet. Let's go ahead and plug this in. This is that strange connector that they gave me. It's for live wires or raw wires, which I think you could connect if you stripped away or you're using your own wiring system. But we're not using that for any way, but it's a nice little addition to have with the set. Let's go ahead and plug in our power supply. And I'll be careful, these are probably going to flare out the light on the camera if I connected everything correctly. And I did, we have all lights are lit. So let's go ahead and set that aside and let's keep moving forward. So we may have to remove some of the adhesive backing on our connectors as we jump these through. So let's make sure we're doing this right. So we'll go back to our little diagram that we set up here that we want to do another connector at the bottom here. So let's go ahead and open this one up and let's get it started. Now we only need to open up one side in each of these. We don't need to open up both. So remember to do that on the next one. Okay, so we have our connectors exposed. And again, we're gonna use the dashed wire with the white space on it, the gray wire, for our negative connection. And that makes them go face down into the connector. So the negative goes to negative. So we'll go ahead and slide this one in. Now I'm gonna try this without the with the adhesive back still on there and see if it was just me fumbling around on that last one or if this one's just going to snap on. 
I put that one on crooked. Okay. So there's that jumper cable. So let's go ahead and put on the next one. Let's make sure we stay with our little wiring harness diagram that we've got going here. So this one goes on the bottom. Again, the striped wire goes on the negative, which is facing down into the clip. And then we should be able to just clip this together like that. Okay, problem solved. It's just that these connectors are a little bit rough to work with. So basically what I need to do is just make sure, I don't know if that jumper is bad or not, but I'm gonna go ahead and use the fourth jumper that we have in the package just to make sure. And we'll open this guy up and we'll connect it up into our wiring harness and we'll move forward with getting this all together. Again, the problem is, is these connectors aren't the best connectors in the world. It's basically a compression connector. And if you don't get a perfect connection on them copper connectors, it's not going to illuminate the LEDs at all. It won't get enough power to the connectors. And again, that's a problem I didn't want to have later on down the road. So let's go ahead and open this up. And we've got three strands so far illuminated. So we just need to get this last one connected and hopefully it illuminates. I didn't really need to expose those other wires, but they are exposed now. So let's go ahead and make sure we do negative to negative now. I think that was the other problem is I might have had these switched around. So let's go ahead and make sure that we get a nice solid connection. And we'll close the clasp. Okay, so this should do it. All right, so we have all four lights are illuminated for the lamp. So the next thing we need to do is attach them to the lamp and then we can hot glue everything in place and we can wrap up this really cool DIY project. So let me clean up a little bit here and we'll get to putting this on the actual lamp on the bases, on the base for the lamp instead. Okay, so we have all of our lights set up in our nice little wiring harness set up ready to go inside the lamp. I've cleaned up the area here so we can easily put this together. So let's go ahead and grab our base and let's put the lamp part, the actual crinkle lamp to the side. And all we really need to do, now if my calculations are correct, the only thing we really need to do is peel off the adhesive and start sticking these on. So the basic idea behind this is that these will all come together in a four column. Let's see if my measurements were correct. Yep, I think we can swing it. I think all the wires will be out of the way. So the top two wire sets of wires we can bundle up and put a zip tie on and the bottom wires we can hot glue to the base area because we have a lot of room here on the base. So let's go ahead and start peeling off the adhesive and start sticking these guys into place. The adhesive for the first strip is actually stuck to the backing. So I'm going to carefully remove it from the backing. We're going to utilize this. It's not over. Nothing is ruined. We can always fix it. It's one of the things I've, I've learned being a maker and DIY person is it's never over until it's over. So let's go ahead and put this on here carefully. This is our adhesive back. Hopefully there's enough left adhesive back for it to stick onto the column. If not, we'll put a little blob of hot glue on there. So I'm just going to gently rub that on there so it sticks to the column. And let's see if this still works. If not, we'll put some hot glue on there. No worries. <laughs> we'll just have to be careful when we're pulling off the adhesive backing that we don't pull the adhesive backing off the actual LED strip. So if my measurements were right that is our first strip on there and let's go ahead and plug this in real quick because we are messing with the wires and make sure that first light these things are still working good yep we're all good okay so the first piece is stuck on so now we just need to be careful when we're pulling the adhesive back off of the led strips that we don't pull the actual adhesive off so 
it was probably beneficial that I trimmed that off of all of these, and I don't think I did. So I'm going to have to score it and then pull up a corner. Okay, so that one worked. The adhesive is still on. Okay. So this one is the light that we're going to make this harness go away up at the top. So we need to make sure that we leave a little bit of room to tuck in our wires down there. And we also need to make sure that we have room at the bottom that we don't crimp up any wires along the bottom here. And that fits in nicely. There we go. So there is our second piece. And again, we can always add a little bit of hot glue on here or even maybe even put a rubber band or a zip tie around all the lights. You won't be able to see that. So let's pull off our next piece of adhesive, making sure we don't pull off the adhesive again. And try not to touch it too much. You don't want to get any grease or hand or grease or uh, dirt on that adhesive back. So we have to make sure that we align these up nicely. Okay, now I know this isn't pretty, but we're going to do something with these wires. We're also going to put a zip tie around this to make sure that this is all bundled together before we put the light on total. So let's go ahead and plug this in, make sure everything still works. Everything still works. We still have good connections. And now let's see what it looks like with the crinkle lamp on top. That looks really, really cool. I can't wait to see it in the dark. It'll really bring out all the lights, but I think that turned out awesome. I think this is a really cool DIY project. I actually have some more ideas for these LED strips that I'll be uh, putting together a really cool DIY project for you guys in the next coming weeks. But this turned out perfect. I actually think our design in Cinema 4D is actually pretty good for just kind of eyeballing everything. We did take some measurements, but all the wires fit nicely. I'm gonna hot glue everything down and I'm gonna put a zip tie around the top here not covering the lights of course and another zip tie around the bottom here just to make sure that everything stays on there and then i'll bundle up these wires and then uh, this will be that'll complete this project but all in all i think this turned out pretty awesome i think that these uh having six lights on each column for a total of 24 lights inside the crinkle lamp really does illuminate the lamp really nicely and it fits in there good and you can't see any of the wires so i think we did a really good job all right, so that pretty much wraps it up for this really cool DIY project of taking the crinkle lamp and making it into a fully functional lamp. Between the time that we ended doing the assembly of the lighting harness and assembling it to the base, I did add the hot glue, like I said, and I did wrangle the wires up pretty nicely so they're not a problem. And I did add a couple of zip ties on here just to make sure the adhesive back on the back of the LED strips stuck on nicely to our little tower that we have inside. And as you can see, I did put a little blob of, of, of hot glue on there just to make sure that one wire didn't get out of place. Now I didn't hot glue the other wire because if there's a problem, some LEDs pop or blow, I can always pull this all apart. And I didn't want to have a whole bunch of hot glue on there. So if I put this on here, you can see it fits nicely. There's no problems with the wires. I did add the rocker switch on here so we can turn it on and it is pretty bright. I'm just gonna warn you guys ahead of time, but it turned out awesome. I think this is a really cool DIY project it's a really easy print. It was about 12 hours for the actual crinkle lamp and about five hours of print time for the base. We only utilized about $6 worth of material of Matter Hacker's Build Series Filament. We did type in to simplify 3D the cost per roll for each of the different colors because the Matter Hacker's blue and the black are at about 15 cent different in cost for the, each of the different filaments. But we did type those in and simplify 3D so we could see what our cost was. And the lights were about $30. So you're about $36, $35, $36 roughly to create this really cool light project or DIY light project. Plus, we have all those extra connectors and we still have quite a lot of on the left of, of roll of LED lights for other projects. I'm going to go ahead and turn this off. So all in all, I think this is a really cool DIY project for anyone to do. It's about a day and a half worth of time to put this together. Obviously, you'll have to purchase all the LEDs and all the equipment. And all those links will be down in the description. And of course, those are affiliate links. And by using those affiliate links, you help out the channel and it doesn't cost you a penny. And you can put together your own really cool crinkle lamp. Now you can use any, obviously, any colors you want, but I chose to use the Matter Hackers Build Series Blue because it's semi-translucent and the Build Series Black because it is pretty opaque and it hides all the different problems that we might have had with our wiring. But we made sure we made plenty of room with our base so the, the, uh, the shaft of light up the center of the crinkle lamp wasn't going to be blocked by any of this black. And as you can see, it turned out pretty awesome and I'm super happy with the results. Well, that about wraps it up for this really cool weekend print DIY project here on the Print3D channel. 
I hope you guys found this episode interesting and informative. And if you're looking for ways to support the channel, check out that Patreon link and all those affiliate links down in the description. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, comment, like, and share those videos, and I'll see you guys soon.